Well, hello there and welcome to counseling, pastoral counseling, um, course C442. My name is Dr. Sandra Stubbs and I am your instructor for this course. And I'm making just a brief introduction video uh, to encourage you to jump right into the course room and get started. Um, the first thing coming up in your course room is just an introduction discussion and uh, post your um, who you are, um, something you know cool about you that maybe we don't know. Um, in the um, course room, you'll see a syllabus. You'll also see a weekly assignment guide to which I walk through each week of this 10 week course and give you the instructions as to what you need to do in order to be successful in this course. And so in that weekly assignment guide, and we're gonna go over that today. So I am going to just share my screen so that you can watch as we go through this weekly guide. I tried to make the guide um, just self-explanatory so that you'll be able to um, know where you are week by week. And so that's, that's my goal. All right here, so on my screen is the weekly guide here. And in this weekly guide, it walks you through each week. So let's just take a look at these weeks. It's a pretty busy course room, so I encourage you to get out here and to begin working on things right away. All right, so the first week, you've got reading. The books that you are to have is the basic types of pastoral care and counseling by Bridget Claire McKeever. McKeever. And there is a pastoral counseling treatment planner, which will come in handy um, if you're going into pastoral counseling and going to be working with people and need some strategies, tools, evidence-based um, things that people can do in order to help themselves. And so I've incorporated that into the course room as well. So now this first week is some reading to be done. So follow your reading course room here. Um, readings, basic types of pastoral care and counseling, they're there. The Cock and Johnsma is your treatment planner. Each week you should have a treatment plan to look at that's covering certain issues that people come in for. And so that's gonna be helpful as you walk through each week dealing with some type of a treatment plan. Out the gate, you have what's called a multi-generational um, family therapy by Bowen, and it's a genogram. And so this outlines the family system from the first um, mother, father, children that they may have, offshoots of the family. So you're gonna be tasked with creating a genogram. You can pick your family to do the genogram. You can pick a family character out of the Bible and complete the genogram, or you can choose a hypothetical family and just create that genogram. With that genogram, you are going to do a couple of things. So you're gonna create this um, diagram that you can get the materials from this genogram right here. GenoPro is a, it's a free system. You get 15 day free trial that you can create the genogram there, print it, upload it. Along with this genogram, you're going to have, it should be about a two page narrative of what's happening in the genogram. Sue married Jeff, they had five kids. This kid married this person. This family deals with this particular thing. You're just going to explain. It's going to be like a key for your genogram. You're just going to explain what's happening in the genogram. And I tell you the importance of a genogram while we're here. When people come into counseling, um, if there's complex family, complex family systems, types of things like depression, anxiety, um, um, 
somewhere child welfare was involved and this child was taken from the home and placed at this house and this child is no longer in this home and so this extended family thing is now going on with this kid being over there and here are foster parents and here are extended parents and here are step parents there's a whole bunch of systems that go on in the family and so when you get that multi-generational uh, Bowen handout read that pages 72 to 389 that's going to explain a little bit more about the family system our family system can tell us a lot about what's going on in our history and for a counselor who's never met you or your family a genogram could explain some patterns that's um in the family for the pastoral counselors and generational curses some things that we can look at as a counselor and to help people to navigate out of some things so that's going to be due march the 12th but i encourage you as the gates open begin reading that and starting that just in case you have any complications you can iron them out ahead of time stay ahead in this class so discussion post each week just about maybe one or two weeks that you don't have a discussion post but each week you're going to have a discussion question to answer. This is crucial because your discussion questions make up the bulk of your grade in this class. And so your discussion questions um, should have something to do with the reading, with the treatment planner, with some of the podcasts and YouTube videos that you're listening to. And each discussion question, you're asked to have at least two additional sources, which means you may have to look up some additional um, evidence-based um, 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 documents or journal articles from Google Scholar or from ProQuest or from the school's resources. You will have to have some additional journal articles, research books that support what you say in your discussion post right to so each week a discussion post that discussion post should be written well written and so make sure you check for grammatical errors um, run on sentences all of those things count against you your post should be at least 250 words in apa format your post should have two at least two sources attached to your journal articles and things like that, two sources. Now, going into your reading, each week you have something to read in your Makiva book. You have some Bible readings that talk about leadership and proverbs and principles as to how to be a counselor and the value of counseling. You're going to have some type of a disorder or some type of a issue to look up in your treatment planning so that you you're, have some Bible context you have some real life context and you have some treatment implementation things that you can apply if you're in situations like that. So we're going to be working that through those three angles throughout our discussion. And so each week there is some type of assignment, whether it is a one page review of a chapter or it is a mock class session. Let's just talk about the soliciting in action. This is due March 19th. The listening in action is um, you're hosting a mock session, either with a friend or someone that's willing to do a video with you. You can do a Zoom video and just, and just record your Zoom video. This video should be no more than 20 minutes, 15 minutes at max. The idea is practice listening. Practice showing people that I hear you, I understand what you're going through, or, well, let me repeat, did I get this right? Are you saying this? And you may repeat what they, they are saying to show that you are an active listener. You may ex exhibit uh, active listening by eye contact, by leaning forward, by nodding your head and, and agreeing, by asking follow-up questions, using the client's words and putting things also in your own words. And so these are the things I'm looking for Four in the listening and action. It's a video of a mock counseling session that you would do with a friend, 15, 20 minutes max, and you're practicing listening. So there is an active listening handout that accompanies that. So read that and it gives you more insight. Uh, moving down week four, 
there is a YouTube video for you to watch there. Daniel Goldman talks about why aren't we more compassionate, talks about being a compassionate, compassionate um, person in the helping profession, how to use empathy. And so as you walk throughout this particular weekly guide, each thing is spelled out. If you have questions about any of these things, feel free to email me, Sandra Stubbs at newhope.edu. In week four, you have what's called a informed consent. Now for the licensed um, pastoral counselor or the licensed counselor, every person that you meet with would have an informed consent. The informed consent will tell the people that you're talking to um, your description of pastoral counseling, what you deem pastoral counseling to be, your qualifications. I am a licensed pastoral counselor or I am a pastor at this church offering pastoral counseling to members. Um, what is your referral policy? If there's something outside of the scope that I feel like I have the skills, knowledge, abilities um, to handle, then I'm gonna refer you to a mental health professional. And here is my disclaimer risk to consider. Now I have a risk to consider that I tell everybody coming into session, talking to me. The risk to consider is that things may get worse before they get better. I tell everybody that because as you come into counseling sessions, you're choosing to spend one week, one week, one day, one hour a day, thinking about, talking about, dealing with something that you would hope to just go away. And the more that you come in and highlight that and focus on that, you may feel a little bit more pressure, um, more, more um, emotional roller coasters because you're trying to deal with this head on. The hopes in counseling as we deal with these things together is that type of risk decreases over time. Because as you familiarize yourself with the tools and you're putting things into play, you'll feel a little bit better. And so financial information, out the gate, people should know, do you charge for your services? And if so, how much? And how long are the services? Confidentiality and exceptions to confidentialities. This is the state standards. We're all mandatory reporters. I tell people confidentially, everything that you tell me is confidential. I keep records of everything. They're all locked up under behind two locks. Confidential. The only reasons why I would have to open up confidentiality is if you're danger to yourself, elderly person, abuse, misuse of a minor, or, um, or I'm being subpoenaed in court to, to talk. And so I, I, that's in my informed consent. People know that coming in the gate that I don't keep those secrets. If you're danger to yourself, I don't keep that secret. I have to report that to the appropriate authorities. Client expectations. What the client can expect from me to be cordial, to be understanding, to be on time, to be um, open and honest with my suggestions or opinions or thoughts concerning what we're going through. Um, I will have out online a, a sample informed consent so that you can see some of the state standards for informed consent. Client has rights, legal and court proceedings, cancellation policies. So my idea is to have you to create this informed consent now and tweak it to best serve you so that when you do begin to offer pastoral counseling, you have this information ready to give to your potential clients. All right, there's a couple of weeks within this weekly assignment that there are built-in extra credit. The extra credits are five points apiece. The built-in extra credits can only be turned in on the week that is stated in, the, in this weekly assignment. Like this extra credit is only for week four. So after week four, this will no longer be accepted. All right, week five, more of the same. You have a mid-week assignment, a mid-session mid assignment, a single case study. I will do a separate video just on this single case study to better explain what it is that we're looking for because that takes a little bit of time. Um, so look for a video for the single case study and to explain how to do this assignment. Um, week six, you have more of the same. You have a YouTube video. You also have a weekly discussion question. And look, there's an extra credit that's here as well. And this is a book review, a book of your choosing or a book from the reading list that I gave you. You can do a book review and it outlines what the book reviews should look like. 
Um, week seven, more of the same. There's an assignment here that is just a written chapter review, which says that I read this chapter and answering the, answering the questions that's there. Um, week eight is more of the same. Week nine is a discussion question and another uh, Bible character review. This assignment allows you to choose a Bible character, an issue that may be going on with that particular Bible character, and to look in your treatment planner and find a treatment plan that can be implemented. And you're just going to practice creating that treatment plan. In this um, character review, there should be a title page. You should have behavioral definitions as to what you see going on with that particular um, character, the long-term goals, short-term goals, objectives, therapeutic interventions. The best point about doing a Bible character is some of these things are already resolved in the Bible. And now you have to apply some clinical judgment in regards to how this is resolved. And that way you can combine the two, this spiritual enrichment and this mental health factor that we come into play and have them walk congruently together. Um, week 10, last week of class, there is just a discussion post that's there and this discussion post is really examining your knowledge, what you've learned and um, enhances, how has this course enhanced your ability to work in the pastoral counseling field? So this is your weekly assignment guide, and I'm looking forward to working with each of you. If you have questions regarding any of the information within this, um, within this weekly assignment guide, uh, feel free to email me. You can call me at 971-264-0649, leave me a message. I am a counselor with a practice, and so um, if I don't get back to you right away, um, I will. Just give me a little bit of time. And so God bless you. I am looking forward to working with you. So I hope this video was helpful and see you soon.